Are you ready to harness the power of light and shadow to take your motion graphics to the ultimate level? Well, in just a few minutes, you'll transform how you create motion graphics by taking advantage of 3D lighting, which will allow you to create some of the coolest projects here in After Effects. Now, you may have noticed that some of these scenes are similar to my other cinematic tutorial. However, all these objects in this tutorial are purely 3D, and as a result, you can create some truly unique designs because of reactive lighting and how it affects shadows. As a side note, I also abuse the heck out of the keyword cinematic, so welcome to Sunduck Film. Anyway, we'll go through the basics first by creating this 3D spherical scene. So, create a white circle with the ellipse tool. Make sure the anchor point is centered up, then make it 3D. Be sure to set your renderer to Advanced 3D or Cinema 4D, uh, but in this case, we'll use Advanced 3D. Go into the size and set it to 2. Now we can navigate to Extrusion Depth and set it to 2 as well. Uh, then change the bevel style to Convex and the bevel depth to 100. Now you have a legit 3D sphere. And if you're a bit confused on why this was more complicated than it should have been, it's because you're not supposed to be able to create 3D spheres here in After Effects yet. So we can scale the sphere up to be very large, position it anywhere that you like, and you may want to duplicate it one, two, three, four million times. <laughs> okay, I'm being dramatic, but do what you wish. So now let's take these two scoops of ice cream and make them better by creating a point light. Now we can affect the overall mood of our scene uh, with the light. The first thing I usually do is go to two views here and set the second view to right. So now we have a better idea where our light is positioned at. So we can adjust the Z position of the light to be directly in the center of our two circles. And as a result, we have a completely different scene, but we're getting there. Let's create a dark gray solid background just to get that out of the way for now. But shifting the focus back to our light, we can animate the position. Uh, but notice as I move it around how the light wraps around our spheres. Uh, this cannot naturally be done with 2D objects. So essentially we're getting the best physics from a lighting perspective by using 3D shapes. Now one option we need to utilize is fall off. By changing the setting to smooth or inverse, we can adjust the radius and the fall off distance to control the light spill. This way when my light is closer to the bottom sphere, the light is not reaching the top sphere as much. Uh, giving us the ability to control light and shadow. Uh, and to add more light, we can then duplicate this light, move it over to the edge of the scene, and perhaps this can suggest that there's a sun over to the right of our scene. But keep in mind, you may need to adjust the fall off settings when you do this. So with the topic of lighting under wraps, uh, the scene still <laughs> looks terrible. Uh, we can fix this by creating an adjustment layer. Uh, we'll then add the noise effect and set it to 12% uncheck color noise. Uh, we'll then now add the glow effect, increase the glow radius to over 100, and you may need to adjust the threshold depending on your scene. But duplicate the effect, increase the glow radius to be much higher, and then do another duplicate and increase it further once more. I'll also alt click the stopwatch for glow radius and type wiggle 2 comma 250, and this will give our scene a flickering effect. And lastly, I love using the posterize effect and setting it anywhere between 7 to 14. Looking good, but now we can insert normal 2D objects into our scene. To do this, we can go back to two views, import your custom object, which can be a, a vector layer or perhaps a logo, and push it back into Z-Space until it's on the top of the sphere. And feel free to throw in some titles, add movement to your scene, and now you have the power to create simple cinematic scenes. Before I abuse the word cinematic and show you how to create this scene with cinematic shadows, be sure to pick up our free motion duck templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. And if you find yourself needing to save precious time on all your projects, we have over 35,000 templates to help you produce amazing work with the link below. Now, I know this scene doesn't look like it, but believe it or not, this is actually a 3D scene. And this is how I would approach most 3D scenes that involve a room. Start off by drawing out a large white rectangle uh, and we can then draw a smaller rectangle which will be a door or a window. Uh, but inside of that shape layer, we can add merge paths and set the mode to subtract to punch a hole into our wall. Quickly make the layer 3D and increase the extrusion depth by a touch. All right, the wall is complete. For a floor, go ahead and create a white solid. 
make it 3D, and set the X rotation to 90 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pop my guy in there real fast. So let's go ahead and create a light and using two views, we'll place the light behind the wall to poke light through the doorway. Unfortunately, no shadows are created because we're in advanced 3D. So we need to set the renderer to Cinema 40 and boom, we have shadows. To see them better, I added a normal white background, which can be our justification for using a light anyway. The reason why we used advanced 3D for our first scene is because the spheres look terrible in Cinema 4D, but shadows can only be produced with environment lights using advanced 3D. So if you want easy shadows, use the Cinema 4D renderer. You can watch our other tutorial on working with shadows and HDR eyes with advanced 3D linked below. But when we add in our adjustment layer effects, this scene looks you know pretty cool. So subscribe if you want to be the best and always be creating.